Hi, Ninja Nerds. In this video, we're going to talk about paracentesis. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, comment down below, and don't forget to subscribe and check out ninjanerd.org where you can get all the notes and illustration for these lectures. But let's talk about the procedure of a paracentesis. So what a paracentesis is, is it's this procedure that we use for our patients to remove ascites within the peritoneum. And you're probably thinking, what, what did you just say? Like, that was so many big words that I totally forget of what you're talking about. So let's back it up. Remember, we just talked about cirrhosis of the liver or any type of liver dysfunction that can go on where the patient can develop extra third spacing of fluids. And typically, that third spacing of fluid within the abdominal cavity is called ascites. And that is located within the peritoneum. And if you forgot what the peritoneum is, that's this cavity right here that is within our abdomen and it helps align all of our vital organs like our stomach, our large and small intestines, our liver, and then we have down here our bladder and our rectum. And what we're looking at here is a, is a slice of a person straight in half. Um, and what we're seeing is the peritoneum here filled with all of this ascites. And when our patient has all this fluid filled within their abdomen, we want to get that fluid off typically because it's causing a lot of other issues, mainly discomfort, it's pressing up onto the, maybe the lungs and they're having trouble breathing. And what we want to do is get that out and also analyze that fluid to see if there's anything else going on within our patient's abdomen. So you have a patient and you're at bedside and we're going to talk them through getting the paracentesis. So hopefully the provider comes to bedside and when we go through the pre-procedure, we're going to make sure that we have consent signed. So make sure that the provider has hopefully gone in, they've told the patient this is how it's going to work. What we're going to do is we're going to have a sterile field. We're going to use ultrasound to hopefully note, um, look inside to see where this fluid cavity is. We're going to insert a needle that is going to allow the drainage of the societies out into our fluid. So once they agree to that, there should be consent. Then we also want to maybe talk to our patient, see if they need to empty their bladder or pee. And that is because we don't want the bladder to be so enlarged that it can cause some issues with the poke. So when we do the procedure and we do puncture in, if the bladder is really enlarged, we don't want to be nicking any other organs other than going in and getting this fluid out. So we want to make sure that that's also empty. And the last thing you want to do is get our baseline vital signs and weight. And when I think of these procedures, when I think of paracentesis, you need to think of it as an INO. It's a procedure of INO. We're going to be taking fluid out, so we want to do those basic things to monitor our eyes and O's, which is our weight and our vital signs. So we're really looking at those blood pressure, we're looking at the heart rate, we're looking at their weight, and then we're going to perform the procedure. So as we go in and perform the paracentesis, the patient will be hopefully laying supine in their bed. They're either going to be having uh, the head of the bed elevated a little bit, or there might be a little bit of side lying, depending on where the society is laying depending on where they're going to perform the procedure. So you're going to talk to the provider about what is the best position for them in this particular patient. And then you're going to assist. You're going to help the provider. Hopefully we're going to be draining a lot of fluid within this collection container. And as this fluid drains, it can take up to 20 to 30 minutes, depending on the amount of ascites that this patient does have. As we assist and we talk our patient through it, it might be a little uncomfortable. There is some local anesthesia, uh, anesthetic that is going to go on in the area so we can help numb it up so the patient isn't in too much discomfort. But you do want to talk them through it, kind of keep them comfortable, assist with the, those calming techniques. Then we're going to go into our post-procedure. Once that has occurred and it's all over, the first thing we're going to do is look at that fluid. We're going to make sure that we're going to document the fluid. What are the things we're looking for? We're going to look at the amounts so of the milliliters, right? Let me put that in lowercase there. So we're going to document our milliliters. We're going to document our color. And then you want to put if it's clear or cloudy, et cetera. Once we've documented the amount, the color, and the clarity, we're going to send it to the lab. Right? Really important that we send it off to the lab because there is a chance that our patient could develop spontaneous bacterial peritonitis, SBP, which we don't want that to occur because if this does occur, it has a high chance of mortality. Once we are sending off the fluids, we are able to then weigh our patient again and get their baseline vital signs. And we're doing this because we just took fluid off of our patient. So once we take that fluid off of our patient, the body does have a, a, a response to it. And it could go, our body could go very hypertensive. Our patient could get those dizzy, classic, um, kind of not feeling too good all of a sudden. I feel kind of nauseous symptoms. So when that does occur, 
we want to think, okay, we're going to assess our patient. Is the vital signs off? Are they looking hypotensive? And there's something that we always give or typically give a patient after they get a paracentesis is albumin. So we want to give them albumin and that's a we're going to be giving it to them because typically the person that has ascites and has paracentesis, somebody who's having already troubles with their liver. Their liver dysfunction is down, so they may have had albumin before, but we're going to add another maybe dose of albumin on top of it to help with that fluid balance. After that, we're going to make sure we are also assessing that puncture site, making that it looks clear, it looks healthy, it's not developing any infection. Maybe put the dressing on it and then talk to our patient about some bed rest. And then that is it. Hopefully the patient is feeling a lot better. They usually do feel better afterwards. They're going to talk to you and say, wow, I feel like I can breathe a little better, which makes sense because now their lungs are going to be able to expand down into that cavity again where all that fluid was before pushing up on their abdomen. So I hope the paracentesis video made sense. And as always, until next time.